a small group of people attempting to do something that most people don't even understand, to create a ceremonial village, to create some sense of tribe. Nevertheless, found enough resources amongst all of us to buy half a million pounds worth of land just to see it go wild. What the people wanted was to see it go wild. Not to be self-sufficient, nor to farm it, just to see what's the original face of the land, her original face, a goddess whose intelligence should somehow be praised and felt. Anyone can wander off and find untrammeled nature. There is no animals here, there's hardly any people. We use a small part of the land and the rest is there to commune with and repose for nature's face to leap up. That might seem like a very ordinary thing, but in Britain it's extremely rare that there's a few hundred acres of land that's completely let grow wild. There's no car park, there's no coffee shop, there's nothing for sale. It's simply wild land returning to its original state. Further on down the valley you'll see field after field after field with a tight hedge and a few ancient trees and sheep everywhere, sheep everywhere, sheep everywhere, everything paid for with taxpayers' money to keep sheep farming from coast to coast in the land of Wales. And here, all we did was take sheep off the land and some cattle. And this is only five years in, and whoom, suddenly she explodes. We thought at first we'd have to plant trees. What we've seen is a miracle of flowers coming everywhere. The ground is leaping up. All kinds of things that were not here in the valley have suddenly spectacularly appeared. This used to be heavily grazed, where last year there was nothing. This year, there's a row of birch, another pioneer species I know, and also behind them, small oaks. These wild willows planted themselves all along the riverbanks and elsewhere. I almost don't want to stand in it because all the mosses are like their own carpet. Alders planting themselves here, there and everywhere, tiny oaks. This was a land that was destroyed by keeping cattle every winter and it is bursting back to life by itself with all of these species. There are small alders that I don't recognize. I think they're only just this year's, maybe last year they were there. And here, four or five years. It's only five years that this land's been going wild. And there you are. There's something about it. When a tree has not been planted, it's not owned by anybody, it's just nature herself, the land going, we're here, we're back. That invisible hand that somehow puts the seed there, and there's the miracle of it. If we plant the tree, then it's kind of, oh, how are our trees doing? We have some ownership or connection that's like that, but when you leave the land alone, it's like it does it. And that mysterious it can be communed with. And you can see what used to happen here. These are all the old silage bags along the bank. This is what the taxpayer pays for. And this is what people can do who are in love in nature. Instead of this erosion taking place that we see here, what will happen is that all the water-loving trees will line the banks. You can see it already beginning to happen. The willows and alders and birch will take hold and later the other trees. So this will be a waterway lined with pioneer species and then with all kinds of trees. Many people who love the whole philosophy of rewilding were begging us not to plant trees. As it turned out, we didn't. The river is low now, but during the winter it's thrown itself over these rocks. The hand of God has placed every single rock in exactly this shape. As soon as we walk on it, or as soon as we move anything, then we've changed it. There's something about seeing the immensity of the natural world in every grass, in every fern, not necessarily in the big oaks, in all the details of how nature has returned. This bank has collapsed down here, and then the mosses have taken off. Some flowers have grown there. Trees rearrange themselves. To be able to see what happens when that original intelligence is just left alone. That's something we need to wash our eyes to see, rather than we want to see an oak forest or, or you know, replanting schemes like uh, the farmers get the grants for down there where they just buy 10,000 oaks and plant them in rows. That's reforesting, but it's not the same as letting the miracle happen. It's not re-miracling. It's not bringing back the mystery and majesty of the whole thing. And whether it's an oak here or whether it's a small flower or whether it's just the way the shale and the rocks are formed, it's the Tao, it's the flow, the magic of the natural world. That is what we can learn to see, and that's what we can bathe in again. And you would think it would be everywhere, but we've so domesticated the world, we've so tamed it, we've so brought it in to our need for order and our need for control and our need for straight lines to allow that chaos and beautiful flow that occurs when nature takes her course, which involves letting go and allowing. And perhaps something that we want to grow won't grow, something else will happen. That inside us also has to happen. We as we originally were. And if we are to have what you might call a true culture or a culture that's you know, really worth being part of, 
we would have to get in touch in the same way. What's natural in us and what is forced to be touched by the miracle of nature and be touched by the miracle of rewilding and think, well, perhaps I could become natural so that the separation between nature and us begins to dissolve and we begin to discover what it would be like to be ourselves naturally, which is wild, but also what we're like with a wild and natural culture. So it doesn't mean that we lack finesse or beauty, but that we rediscover that, find out what it's like. But if we are going to tame all of nature, if we're going to cut all the grass, if we're going to have all the hedgerows, if we're going to domesticate everything, we lose the face of the wild. And we lose that companionship of the wild in plants and animals. We don't know why these squirrels are in the trees. We don't know how this grass knows when to come up. We don't know why one year there's lots of mountain ash and the next year there's more oak. Why the juice comes up one month earlier, one month late. There's a miracle of climate, a miracle of exchange going on. And we have our little scientific knowledge but we don't really know anything. We don't know where this came from and we don't know how we're moving our hands around. This hand is wild. What I'm saying might be tame enough but but the body that's saying it doesn't belong to any human. It is wild nature itself, born of these rocks, born of these waters. We start off with an explosion of fire, rocks in space, and then the presence in one place of water and liquid form. And give it a billion years, and we have these conversations, and we have this possibility for the intelligence of the universe to start talking to itself. Pretty wild, huh? Eh?